Hello freshman students, this is me again, your teacher Manny for El Quran, discussing to you what is all about nutrition for wellness. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, eating healthy food remains an important part of maintaining your health. While there are no specific foods that can help you protect from the virus, a nutritious diet can boost your immune system or help you fight off symptoms. You may not be able to share meals with your friends and loved ones, but there are lots of other ways to eat, to eat well and of course support your health at this difficult time. So in this video, you will learn about the food and what makes up a good diet. You will learn about the different categories of food that your body needs and what foods uh, should you avoid in large quantities in order to stay healthy. You will also learn to evaluate your eating patterns based on the nutritional guidelines for Filipinos or the what we call Philippine Food Pyramid Guide and of course to interpret food labels accurately. So let's start. First, uh, what do we mean by eating healthy? So, eating a healthy diet is not about strict limitations. So, staying unrealistically uh, thin or depriving yourself of the foods you love. Rather, it's about feeling great and having more energy, um, improving your health and boosting your mood. So, of course, by using these simple tips, uh, you can cut through the confusion and learn how to create and stick to a tasty, varied, nutritious diet that is good for your mind as it is for your body. That is what we meant by eating healthy. Now, take a look on this healthy eating pyramid or the pyramid guide. Now, this pyramid guide is from the Harvard, the healthy eating pyramid. Uh, this represents the latest nutritional science. So as you can see on the illustration, the widest part at the bottom is for things that are most important. So what are the most important? As you can see in the illustration, the most important thing that we must um, focus in order for us to become healthy is of course daily exercise and weight control. Now, the foods at the narrow top are those that should be eaten sparingly nor if at all. Now, we have the different fundamentals of eating. Let's start. But before that, um, for the fundamentals of healthy eating, there are some extreme diets may suggest otherwise. We all need a balance of protein, fat, carbohydrates, uh, fiber, vitamins, and of course minerals in our diets to, in order to sustain a healthy body. You don't need to eliminate certain categories of food from your diet, but rather select the healthiest options from each category. So what's, what are these categories? Let's start with protein. When you see protein, it gives you the energy to get up and go and keep going while also supporting mood and cognitive function. So, take note that too much protein can be harmful to people with kidney disease. But, the latest research suggests that many of us need more high-quality protein, especially, especially as we age, if you need uh, if you need a lot of energy for a long time or are starving, amino acids can be converted to glucose to provide energy. Next, we have the fat. Fat. Not all fat is the same. While bad fats can wreck your diet and increase your risk of certain diseases, good fats also or good fats also protect your brain and your heart. In fact, healthy fats such as omega-3s are vital to your physical and emotional health. Including more healthy fat in your diet can improve your mood, your boost, your well-being, and even your and, and even trim your waistline. 
Next category of the healthy eating is the fiber. Fiber. Eating foods uh, uh, eating foods high in dietary fiber such as grains, fruit, vegetables, nuts and beans can help you stay regular and lower your risk for heart disease, stroke and diabetes. It can also improve your skin and even help you to lose your weight. So that is all about the fiber. Next, we have calcium. As well as leading to osteoporosis, not getting enough calcium in your diet can also contribute to anxiety, depression, and sleep difficulties. So, if you are um, uh, experiencing these kinds of illnesses, so maybe uh, you are lacked of, or your body is lacked of calcium. Whatever your age or gender, it is vital to include calcium-rich foods in your diet. Limit those that deplete calcium. So, limitahan natin yung sarili natin sa mga foods na nagbabawas ng calcium sa ating katawan. And get enough magnesium and vitamins D and K to help calcium do its job. Next, we have carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, these are one of your body's main sources of energy. And it is true. But, most should come from complex, unrefined carbs, such as vegetables, whole grains, fruit, rather than sugars and refined carbs. Cutting back on the white bread, pastries, starches, and sugar can prevent rapid spikes in blood sugar. Fluctuations in mood and energy and a buildup of fat, especially around your waistline. So, uh, basically, Extra carbohydrate is converted to fat. Exercise increases the storage capacity of glycogen, so store less fat. Next, we have this what we call vitamins. These vitamins are necessary for normal body metabolism, growth, and development. Now, take note that vitamins do not provide the body with energy, but they, al- they allow the, en- the body or they allow the energy from consumed carbohydrates, fats, and proteins to be released. Although vitamins are vital to life, they are required in, minute or in a minute amount. Next, we have this what we call minerals. Minerals are, are inorganic substances that are critical to many enzyme functions in the body. So approximately 25 minerals have important roles in body functions or in body functions. Minerals are contained in all cells and are concentrated in hard parts of the body such as the nails, your teeth and your bones. And of course, and are crucial to maintaining water balance and the acid-base balance. Now, Minerals are essential components of the respiratory pigments, enzymes, and enzyme systems while also regulating muscular and um, nervous tissue ex- excitability, blood clotting, and normal heart rhythm. Examples of these minerals include chromium, um, cobalt, uh, copper, fluoride, uh, ano pa ba? iodine, iron, manganese, uh, molybdenum, selenium, and even uh, zinc. These are examples of minerals. Next, and for the last category of our uh, healthy uh, uh, healthy eating uh, habits that the body shouldn't take. Of course, the most abundant substance in our body it is the water. Although water does not provide energy to the body in the form of calories, it is a sub- substance that is essential to the life. So, among other things, water lubricant joints, absorb shock, uh, regulates body temperature, maintains blood volume, and transports fluids throughout the body while comprising 60% of an individual's body. Now, uh, basically, 
to ensure proper uh, water balance and prevent dehydration, approximately 6 or 6 to 8 ounce glasses of water should be consumed each day an individual is not exercising. So, ang uh, maximum level ng uh, glass of water na dapat naiinom ng isang tao is up 6 up to 8 glasses of water a day. Now, when working out, current recommendation for water intake are 2 to 3 8 ounce cups of water before exercising. And of course, 4 to 6 ounces of cool water every 15 minutes during the workout. And of course, rehydrating thoroughly after doing such physical activities. Now, let us proceed to a healthy plate. Ano nga ba itong tinatawag nating healthy plate? Hindi ito yung literally na yung pinggan ay magiging healthy. Meaning to say, uh, these are ways or uh, steps that you can do in order for you to create a healthy eating plate. For the first step, Choose a 9 inch or a smaller plate. So, um, ang standard size ng plate daw natin na dapat na ginagamit ay ang circumference niya ay 9 inches. Now, how do you how are you going to measure that? Use a ruler and measure across your plate. Of course, use a 9 inch plate or smaller plate, smaller plate to prevent over overfilling the plate and eating too much. Kaya, yun yung purpose. Why should we use a only 9 inch 9 inches plate or is or even a smaller one para hindi natin um, magawa yung pagkain ng sobra-sobra. Next step. Fill one half of the 9 inch plate with non-starchy vegetables and fruits. Ano ba? Anong, tinataw, anong ibig sabihin nun? Meaning to say, choose a variety of vegetables, especially dark green, red, and orange vegetables. <clears throat> Next, non-starchy vegetables are low in calories and full of fiber, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. So, what are the examples of these non-starchy uh, vegetables? Examples of non-starchy vegetables include carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, asparagus, and peppers. Next, select whole fruit from uh, whole fruit over the juice. But if you choose juice, look for 100% fruit juice. Next, enjoy a wide range of colorful vegetables and fruits. Select what is in season for variety and flavor. Next, Vegetables are uh, should be fresh and then canned or frozen. Eat only small amounts of dried fruits as this can be high in calories. Dried fruits are healthy quick snacks. Next, shop for vegetables without added salt, butter or cream sauces and don't add this when cooking. And for the last, Limit fruit with added sugars or syrup. Next step, fill one fourth of um, one fourth of the um, nine inch plate with lean protein choices. That is about three ounces cooked or the size of a deck cards. Now, examples of protein foods include seafood beans, peas, and nuts, as well as lean meats, poultry, mm, eggs, but limit to one egg per day. So, yun yung lang dapat ang limitation ng isang tao sa pagkain ng egg. Limit yourself to eating eggs or just a single egg per day. Now, next, eat seafood. Seafoods includes fish and shellfish or other meatless protein in place of meat or poultry at least twice a week. Now, select some seafood that is higher in oils and of course lower in mercury such as uh, salmon, trout, and herring. So, meatless uh, protein sources include soy such as tofu, tempeh, 
edama edama me and of course legumes now try grilling broiling and poaching or roasting these cooking methods do not add extra fat next drain fat from ground meats after cooking avoid breading on meat and poultry which adds calories next next step is that fill one fourth of the nine inch plate with whole grains and starchy vegetables consume at least half of all grains as whole grains now uh, basically what we're going to do is to eat three ounces or more of whole grain cereals breads crackers rice or pasta each day uh, one ounce is about one slice of bread one cup of uh, breakfast cereal or one half cup of cooked rice or pasta <clears throat> next use the nutrition facts label to choose whole grains that are good or excellent source of dietary fiber next good sources of fiber contain 10 to 19 percent of the daily value per serving and then excellent sources of dietary fiber contain 20 percent or more of the daily value per serving and of course don't forget to check the ingredients or the ingredient list and look for the first or the second ingredient to include the words whole or whole grain now what are the examples of whole grain examples of whole grains include uh, whole wheat pasta um, whole wheat or whole grain breads brown rice uh, and whole grain hot and cold cereals and now example of starchy vegetables include potatoes corn peas winter squash and yams and even legumes and of course for the last step in your in creating your healthy plate you must include a healthy dietary selections so you must increase intake of fat free or low fat milk and milk products such as yogurt cheese and fortified soy beverages and another thing is that you must choose fat-free or low-fat milk or yogurt more often than the cheese and then of course when selecting cheese choose a low-fat or reduced fat versions of the cheese and then for the last uh, if you if you are lactose intolerant try lactose free milk um, drink smaller amounts of milk at a time or try fortified soy beverages you can also ask your dietitian about an enzyme supplement next uh, the importance of good, nutri good nutrition gaano nga baka importante na magkaroon tayo ng good nutrition good nutrition means your body gets all the nutrients the vitamins and minerals it needs to work its best so plan your meals and snacks to include nutrient dense foods that are low in on calories now um, most people know good nutrition and physical activity can help maintain a healthy weight but the benefits of good nutrition go beyond weight good nutrition can help of course first reduce the risk of some diseases including heart disease uh, diabetes stroke some cancers and osteoporosis and also good nutrition uh, helps you reduce high blood pressure uh, it lowers high cholesterol of course it improves your well-being it improves your ability to fight off illnesses and then it improves your ability to recover from illness or injury and it increases your energy level next Understanding the nutrition facts label. Reading food labels can help you make uh, wise food choices, most food lists, nutrition information uh, on the package label called the nutrition facts. Now, these facts can help you compare foods and choose the, the healthiest option. 
Now, uh, we make healthy choices easier by understanding the sections of the Nutrition Facts label. First, of course, you must consider the serving size. The serving size is... Sige lang, kain ka lang. The serving size is a measured amount of food. Uh, in this sample label, the serving size is 1 cup and there are 2 servings per container. So, if you ate the whole container, you would eat 2 cups which doubles the calories and other nutrient members. Or nutrient numbers rather. Then, check the serving, ser serving size on food labels to determine if the number of servings you are eating is smaller or larger. And then, this will help you now to stay within your daily calorie goal. Wala may mumu, guys. Char! Next! We have the calories. Calories, uh, the number of calories is the total amount of the energy the food provides. Pay attention to your calories. If you eat more calories than your body uses, over time, you will gain weight. Now, Another important part of the label is the number of calories from fat. You should limit the number of calories from fat to 20 to 35% of your total daily calories. In the sample label, uh, there are 250 calories in one serving and 110 calories from fat. So this means almost 50% of the calories in a single serving of this food come from fat. Due to its high fat content, this food is not a healthy choice. Did you get it? Next, you must limit these nutrients. Now, Americans typically eat too much saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium. Now, which can increase the risk of heart disease, cancer, or diabetes. Now, total fat is important to to watch, of course. Kailangan natin observe, observahan yung mga fats na kinakain natin. But, saturated fat and trans fat are particularly bad for you. They may raise your blood cholesterol level, which can increase, uh, can, increase can increase your risk of heart disease. Choose foods containing less than 10% of calories from saturated fat. Next, Get enough of these nutrients. So what are these nutrients? You should get more fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron in your diet. Eating enough of these nutrients can reduce your risk of uh, certain cancers, osteoporosis, or hypertension. It is recommended to consume 100% of each of these nutrients daily to prevent nutrition-related diseases. I hope that is clear. Next, we need to consider the percent daily value. Now, understanding the percent daily values on a food label, a food label can help you choose foods high in good nutrients and low in bad nutrients. The percent daily values is based on a 2,000 calorie diet. If you eat less than 2,000 calories a day, your daily value may be lower than what is listed on the label. But if you eat more than 2,000 calories a day, your daily value may be higher. Remember, 5% of daily values are less or low and 20% of or more is high. Choose, choose the food uh, with a low percent in daily values for fat, saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium. Next, understanding the footnote. The footnote, it refers to the percent daily value mentioned in the item number 5. It states that percentages are based on a 2,000 calorie diet which does not change from product to product. So this footnote also reminds consumers of the daily intake of different recommended nutrients depending on the caloric needs. 
So this is an example of the nutritional facts. So you start reading your nutrition facts, of course, on the serving size, the servings per container, and then you check the calories. And then quick guide, you check the quick guide to percent daily value. And then limit these nutrients as stated in item 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And then at the item number 9, you get enough of these nutrients. Now, for uh, the um, anthropometric, let's proceed to the what we call anthropometric. The word anthropometric comes from two words. Anthropo means human and metri means measurement. Anthropometrics now define as objective measurements that help determine amount of muscle and percentage of body fat. Anthropometrics may include height, weight, body mass, in, body mass index, skin folds measurements, and of course, the body, fra the body frame size. Now, what is what we call body mass index or your BMI? It is the weight of a person in kilograms divided by their, by their height in meters squared. You will have to convert measure, measurements in centimeter to meter and then your weight so the formula now of getting your BMR or, or computing for your BMI is that um, weight uh, that's the unit is kilogram over height squared by meter now uh, as you can see on the table kapag ang result ng computation mo sa BMI mo ay more than 40.0 meaning you are very obese but if your BMI uh, measures up 30 up to 40, you are obese. Hindi siya very. Now, kapag ang BMI mo naman ay 25 to 29.9, you are overweight. Kapag ang BMI mo ay 18.5 to 24.9, meaning normal ang nutritional status mo. Kapag halimbawa naman ang BMI mo na nakuha mo ay 17 up to 18.49, you are mild, so hindi, hindi pa siya sure na malnourished. So your, your nutritional status is just mild malnutrition. Now, if your BMI is 16.0 up to 16.9, you are moderate malnutrition. And then of course, if your BMI is less than 16.0, Masyadong mababa na sa 16, meaning to say, you have your nutritional status is severe chronic energy deficiency. So I think that's the end of our presentation. See you uh, on our next uh, video discussion. Goodbye, freshman students. Kaya natin to.